English is one of the most widely spoken languages in the world, and it is considered a global lingua franca. As a result, learning English offers numerous benefits that can help individuals succeed in a rapidly globalizing world. In this essay, we will explore some of the key advantages of learning English. Firstly, English proficiency can improve employment prospects. Many multinational corporations require employees to have a high level of English proficiency, as it is often used as a common language for business communication. This means that those who are proficient in English have an advantage in the job market, as they are able to communicate effectively with colleagues and clients from around the world. Additionally, being able to speak English can increase opportunities for professional development and advancement, as it opens up doors to attend international conferences and workshops. Another benefit of learning English is that it enables individuals to access a wealth of information and resources. The internet is full of information written in English, and a large proportion of academic journals and books are also published in English. This means that individuals who are able to read and understand English have access to a much wider range of knowledge and resources than those who do not speak the language. In addition, learning English can help to promote cultural understanding and facilitate international communication. English is widely used as a second language in many countries, and by speaking it, individuals can connect with people from diverse cultures and backgrounds. This can help to break down linguistic and cultural barriers and foster greater cross-cultural understanding and collaboration. Moreover, learning English can also have cognitive benefits. Studies have shown that bilingualism and multilingualism can improve cognitive abilities such as problem-solving, memory, and decision-making. This is because being able to speak multiple languages requires the brain to constantly switch between languages and adapt to different linguistic rules and structures. This cognitive stimulation can have positive effects on overall brain function and cognitive development. In conclusion, learning English offers numerous benefits, both personal and professional. From improving employment prospects to promoting cultural understanding and facilitating international communication, English proficiency is a valuable asset in today's rapidly globalizing world. Whether for personal or professional reasons, the advantages of learning English make it a worthwhile investment for individuals of all ages and backgrounds. Crows have been known to exhibit behaviors that suggest they possess high levels of intelligence and problem-solving abilities. One such behavior is their tendency to bring gifts to humans who have fed them. This phenomenon, known as gifting, has been observed by many bird watchers and researchers, and it raises questions about the motivations behind this unusual behavior. Studies have shown that crows have remarkable memories and are able to recognize individual faces. They also have the ability to understand cause and effect relationships and use tools to obtain food. This combination of cognitive skills may explain why some crows will seek out opportunities to bring gifts to humans who have fed them in the past. By bringing gifts, crows may be trying to repay the favor or form a positive relationship with their human benefactors. In many cases, the gifts crows bring to humans are shiny or unusual objects, such as coins, keys, and even toys. It is thought that crows are attracted to these objects because they have a strong innate attraction to shiny things. Some researchers have also suggested that crows may bring gifts to humans as a way of establishing a dominance relationship. By offering gifts, crows may be trying to demonstrate their superiority and control over their human partners. However, the phenomenon of crows giving gifts to humans is not well understood, and there is still much to learn about this intriguing behavior. Some researchers have suggested that crows may be driven by a complex set of motivations, including gratitude, reciprocity, and social dominance. It is possible that different crows may exhibit different motivations for gifting, 
and that these motivations may change over time. Despite the lack of a definitive explanation for the behavior, gifting by crows has captured the imagination of many people. For those who have experienced this phenomenon, it can be a fascinating and rewarding experience, as it provides a glimpse into the complex world of crow behavior and cognition. In conclusion, Crows giving gifts to humans is a mysterious and intriguing phenomenon that continues to captivate researchers and birdwatchers alike. While much is still unknown about this behavior, it provides an opportunity to explore the complex cognitive abilities of these intelligent birds and to better understand the motivations behind their actions. Whether driven by gratitude, reciprocity, or social dominance, the phenomenon of crows giving gifts to humans highlights the complex and unexpected ways in which animals can interact with humans and form unique relationships. Household dust is a mixture of various particles that accumulate on surfaces in homes and other indoor environments. It is a common and persistent problem that can negatively impact indoor air quality and health. In this essay, we will explore the various components that make up household dust and how it is formed. One of the main components of household dust is skin cells, which are shed by humans and pets. These skin cells make up a significant portion of household dust, and they can contain allergens such as pet dander, dust mites, and bacteria. Dust mites are tiny insects that feed on the skin cells and other organic matter found in dust, and their presence can cause allergies and asthma in some individuals. Another component of household dust is tiny particles of dirt, sand, and soil that are brought in from outside. These particles can accumulate on surfaces and in the air inside homes and they can contain heavy metals and other contaminants that can negatively impact indoor air quality. Household dust can also contain fibers from textiles, such as carpet and upholstery, as well as particles of household chemicals and cleaning products. For example, flame retardants used in furniture and electronics can break down over time and become part of household dust. These chemicals can be toxic and have negative effects on health if inhaled or ingested. In addition, household dust can also contain particles from building materials, such as paint, wood, and insulation. These particles can become airborne and contribute to indoor air pollution. The formation of household dust is the result of a number of different processes, including human and pet activity air movement, and the breakdown of materials over time. For example, skin cells are constantly being shed by humans and pets, and they can accumulate on surfaces and in the air. Dust is also created when particles in the air settle on surfaces, and it can become airborne again when it is disturbed, for example by vacuuming or walking on a carpet. In conclusion, Household dust is a complex mixture of various particles, including skin cells, dirt, fibers from textiles, chemicals, and building materials. Understanding the composition and formation of household dust is important for improving indoor air quality and reducing its negative impact on health. Regular cleaning and dusting, as well as the use of air purifiers, can help to reduce levels of household dust and improve indoor air quality. The bumblebee bat, also known as Kitty's hog-nosed bat, is a species of microbat that is native to Thailand and Myanmar. It is the smallest species of bat in the world and weighs only about 2 grams, which is equivalent to a penny. Despite its tiny size, the bumblebee bat has a unique appearance, with brown fur and a distinctive snout that resembles the nose of a hog. The bumblebee bat lives in limestone caves and feeds on insects, mainly flies and moths. It is nocturnal and is active during the night, using echolocation to navigate and find prey. 
The bumblebee bat emits high-pitched sounds that bounce off objects and return to the bat as echoes, allowing it to build a mental map of its surroundings. This capability is crucial for the bat's survival, as it allows it to fly through dark and complex environments with ease. The bumblebee bat plays an important role in the ecosystem by controlling the populations of insects. By feeding on insects, the bat helps to reduce the number of pests that would otherwise damage crops and forests. Moreover, the bat's droppings provide important nutrients for the soil, and its presence can help to control the populations of other insect-eating animals, such as spiders and birds. Despite its significance, the bumblebee bat is considered an endangered species, due to habitat loss and degradation. The bats are highly sensitive to changes in their environment, and the destruction of their limestone caves, which often occur to make way for agriculture, mining, and urban development, has reduced their population significantly. In addition, the bats are often hunted for their fur and for use in traditional medicine, further contributing to their decline. To conserve the bumblebee bat, conservationists and governments have taken several measures. For example, some limestone caves have been protected and designated as protected areas, where the bats are free from human disturbance. Additionally, some organizations have started breeding programs for the bats, which are then released into the wild. In conclusion, the bumblebee bat is a unique and fascinating species of microbat that plays an important role in the ecosystem. Despite its tiny size, the bumblebee bat is vital to maintaining a healthy and balanced environment, and its decline highlights the need for greater conservation efforts. The world's first animated film, The Humorous Faces of Funny Faces, was released in 1906 and represented a significant turning point in the history of animation. This silent, black-and-white film was created by American cartoonist J. Stuart Blackton and is considered a groundbreaking work in the field of animation. Before the release of the humorous phases of Funny Faces, animation was limited to simple flipbook-style drawings that gave the illusion of movement. Blackton's film marked the first time that animation was captured on film, and its popularity signaled the beginning of a new era of animated storytelling. The film itself was a series of short vignettes in which the faces of different characters were drawn and redrawn to change their expressions. The simplicity of the animation combined with the humor of the scenes made the humorous phases of funny faces a hit with audiences. The film's success encouraged other animators to explore the medium further and to develop new techniques for creating animated films. One of the biggest innovations of the humorous phases of Funny Faces was the use of stop-motion animation. This technique involved taking a series of photographs of an object or character, each one slightly different from the previous, and then playing the photographs back in rapid succession to give the illusion of movement. This technique became a staple of early animation and was used in many of the first animated films. Despite its historical significance, the humorous phases of Funny Faces is largely forgotten today. This is partly due to the fact that many of the early animated films have been lost over time, and partly due to the fact that animation has evolved significantly since the film's release. However, the legacy of the humorous phases of Funny Faces continues to live on, as it represents a key moment in the history of animation and continues to inspire animators today. In conclusion, the humorous phases of Funny Faces represents a major milestone in the history of animation. The film's innovations, such as the use of stop-motion and cell animation, paved the way for the development of other animation techniques and helped establish animation as a viable medium for storytelling. Although it is largely forgotten today, its impact continues to be felt and its legacy lives on as an important part of the history of animation.
Water is an essential resource for all life on Earth, and human beings use a significant portion of the planet's total water supply. According to the United Nations, the average person uses between 80 and 100 gallons of water per day, primarily for household purposes such as drinking, cooking, bathing, and laundry. This equates to approximately 25 to 30 percent of the total water consumed globally each day. Industrial uses also play a significant role in the amount of water consumed by humans. The production of goods such as clothing, paper, and electronics requires large amounts of water, and the agriculture sector also consumes significant amounts of water to irrigate crops and raise livestock. In fact, it is estimated that approximately 70% of all freshwater withdrawn from rivers, lakes, and aquifers is used for agricultural purposes. Water scarcity is becoming an increasingly pressing issue, as the global population continues to grow and the demand for water increases. Many regions around the world are already facing water shortages, and the situation is expected to worsen in the coming decades as the population continues to grow and water usage continues to increase. To address the growing water scarcity problem, it is important for governments and individuals to take action to conserve and manage water resources more effectively. This can include implementing policies and programs to promote water conservation, improving water management practices, and investing in technologies to improve water efficiency. Additionally, it is important to address the root causes of water scarcity, such as climate change and population growth, by reducing greenhouse gas emissions and promoting sustainable development. In conclusion, Human beings use a significant portion of the Earth's total water supply, with the average person consuming between 80 and 100 gallons of water per day. This is contributing to the growing water scarcity problem, which is expected to worsen in the coming decades due to factors such as population growth and climate change. To address this problem, it is essential for governments and individuals to take action to conserve and manage water resources more effectively and to address the root causes of water scarcity by promoting sustainable development and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Throughout history, many people have used various substances to improve their physical appearance, including their skin. One of the more unusual and dangerous substances used for this purpose was arsenic. Arsenic is a toxic chemical that was once widely used in cosmetic products and medicines. Despite its toxic nature, people believe that consuming arsenic would help improve their skin by giving it a smooth and radiant appearance. Arsenic was used in many forms, including in the form of powders, pills, and even tonics. It was also commonly added to food and drinks as a means of ingestion. Some people even applied it directly to their skin as a beauty treatment. The belief in the skin enhancing properties of arsenic was so widespread that it became a popular ingredient in many cosmetics and beauty products of the time. However, it was soon discovered that consuming arsenic was not only dangerous, but also deadly. Chronic exposure to arsenic can lead to a wide range of health problems, including skin lesions, anemia, and cancer. Arsenic is also known to cause organ damage and can result in death. Despite this knowledge, people continue to use arsenic for cosmetic purposes for several more decades, often with disastrous results. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, governments around the world began to regulate the use of arsenic in cosmetics and other products. The recognition of the dangers of arsenic consumption eventually led to stricter regulations and the eventual ban of the substance in many countries. Today, the use of arsenic in cosmetics is strictly prohibited and the substance is considered to be one of the most toxic chemicals in the world. Despite its dangers, the belief in the skin-enhancing properties of arsenic persisted for many years and continues to be present in some cultures to this day. 
However, it is now widely recognized that the dangers of arsenic far outweigh any perceived benefits and that there are many safer and more effective alternatives available for improving the appearance of the skin. In conclusion, the use of arsenic as a means of improving the appearance of the skin was a dangerous and widespread practice throughout history. Despite its toxic nature, People believed in the skin-enhancing properties of the substance and consumed it in various forms. Today, the use of arsenic in cosmetics and other products is strictly prohibited and the dangers of the substance are widely recognized. Japan is a country renowned for its innovative technology and advanced infrastructure, and this is reflected in the widespread use of vending machines throughout the country. With a population of over 126 million people, it is estimated that there is one vending machine for every 40 individuals in Japan. This means that there are over 3 million vending machines in the country, making it one of the highest vending machine to person ratios in the world. Vending machines can be found everywhere in Japan, from busy city streets to remote rural areas. They offer a wide range of products, including drinks, snacks, and even meals. The vending machines in Japan are highly sophisticated and often feature touchscreens, cashless payment options, and advanced refrigeration systems to keep drinks and food at the optimal temperature. The use of vending machines in Japan is so widespread due to a number of factors, including the country's high population density and advanced infrastructure. In addition, the Japanese culture values convenience and efficiency, and vending machines offer a quick and easy solution for individuals in need of a drink or snack. Furthermore, the machines are highly reliable and efficient, with high uptime and low maintenance requirements making them an attractive option for businesses and individuals alike. The widespread use of vending machines in Japan has also had a positive impact on the country's economy. The vending machine industry is a major contributor to Japan's economy, generating billions of yen in revenue each year. Additionally, the machines have created numerous jobs in the manufacturing, distribution, and maintenance industries. In conclusion, Japan's widespread use of vending machines is a reflection of the country's innovative technology and advanced infrastructure. With one machine for every 40 people, the country has one of the highest vending machine to person ratios in the world. The machines offer a convenient and efficient solution for individuals in need of a drink or snack and have had a positive impact on the country's economy by generating billions of yen in revenue and creating numerous jobs. In the early 20th century, professional athletes often looked for ways to supplement their income during the off-season. One popular option was to perform in vaudeville shows, a type of entertainment that was popular in the United States and Canada at the time. Vaudeville was a variety show that included acts such as singing, dancing, acrobatics, magic tricks, and comedy skits. Professional athletes saw performing in vaudeville as a way to showcase their athletic skills, generate additional income, and stay in the public eye during the off-season. Some of the most famous athletes of the time, including Babe Ruth, Jim Thorpe, and Ty Cobb, took to the vaudeville stage and performed stunts that showcased their athletic abilities. Babe Ruth, for example, was known for hitting home runs, and he would perform a stunt in which he would hit a baseball into the rafters of the theater. Ty Cobb was a skilled baseball player and a talented runner, and he would perform running stunts on stage, often racing against horses. Jim Thorpe was a talented all-around athlete and would perform a variety of athletic stunts, including high jumps and hurdles. The popularity of vaudeville shows and the involvement of professional athletes helped to popularize sports and bring the attention of a wider audience to the athletic feats of these athletes.
It also provided a way for professional athletes to earn additional income and maintain a high level of public visibility during the off-season. In addition to showcasing their athletic abilities, professional athletes also had the opportunity to develop their performing skills while on the vaudeville stage. Many athletes discovered that they had a talent for performing and even pursued careers as entertainers after their athletic careers were over. Despite its popularity, the era of vaudeville and the involvement of professional athletes in these shows eventually came to an end. With the rise of television and other forms of entertainment, vaudeville faded from the public consciousness, and the tradition of professional athletes performing in vaudeville shows was largely forgotten. In conclusion, the tradition of professional athletes performing in vaudeville shows during the off-season was a significant chapter in the history of both sports and entertainment. Professional athletes saw vaudeville as a way to supplement their income and stay in the public eye during the off-season, and their involvement helped to popularize sports and bring attention to the athletic feats of these athletes. Despite the decline of vaudeville, the tradition remains an interesting piece of history and a testament to the versatility and adaptability of professional athletes. The world of fungi is a complex and fascinating one, and one of the most intriguing aspects of these organisms is their ability to manipulate other species. In some cases, fungi have evolved to create zombies and control their minds, in a remarkable display of parasitic behavior. One of the most well-known examples of this type of fungal mind control is the case of the zombie ant fungus. This fungus infects ants and alters their behavior, causing them to leave their colony and climb to the top of a plant. There, the fungus sprouts from the ant's head and releases its spores into the air to spread to other ants and continue the cycle of infection. Another example of fungal mind control can be seen in the relationship between certain fungi and termites. These fungi secrete chemicals that manipulate the termites, causing them to build special structures that promote the growth of the fungi. The termites are then unable to resist the urge to feed the fungi, and they eventually die, providing nourishment for the fungi to continue its growth. While the mechanisms behind fungal mind control are still being studied and understood, scientists believe that the fungi manipulate the nervous systems of their hosts by secreting chemicals that affect their behavior. This type of manipulation is not limited to insects, some fungi have also been observed controlling the behavior of other organisms, including snail and slugs. In addition to their mind-controlling abilities, fungi also play a crucial role in the ecosystem. They are decomposers, breaking down dead plant and animal matter and recycling nutrients back into the soil. They also form symbiotic relationships with other organisms, including trees, providing them with essential nutrients in exchange for carbon and other resources. Despite their importance in the ecosystem, the full extent of fungal abilities is still not well understood. The study of these fascinating organisms has been limited due to their complex and often hidden lifestyles, but with advances in technology and new research techniques, scientists are beginning to uncover the secrets of these fascinating creatures. In conclusion, the ability of some fungi to create zombies and control their minds is a remarkable example of the incredible diversity and complexity of the natural world. These interactions between fungi and their hosts highlight the ways in which different species can evolve and adapt to their environments, and they serve as a reminder of the intricate relationships that exist in nature. Oranges are a staple in many diets and are known for their sweet and juicy flavor. But what many people do not know is that the first oranges were not actually orange. In fact, the original oranges were green and sour, much different from the oranges we know today. The origin of oranges is believed to be in Southeast Asia, 
specifically in the region surrounding the Mekong River in China. These early oranges were small and sour, and were used primarily for cooking and for medicinal purposes. Over time, oranges made their way to other parts of Asia, and eventually to Europe and the Middle East, where they were cultivated and hybridized. As oranges were hybridized and grown in different regions, their appearance and flavor changed. This was due in part to the fact that different climates and soils caused the oranges to grow differently, and also due to selective breeding. For example, in the Mediterranean, oranges were hybridized with other citrus fruits to create sweeter and larger varieties. One of the most significant developments in the history of oranges was the creation of the sweet orange, which is a type of orange that most people are familiar with today. Sweet oranges were created through a process of crossbreeding between the pomelo and the mandarin orange. This hybridization created a sweeter, larger, and easier to peel orange that was much more palatable to the human palate. The sweet orange became extremely popular in Europe, and it was eventually brought to the Americas, where it quickly became one of the most important crops. Today, Oranges are grown in warm climates all over the world, from Florida and California in the United States to South Africa, Brazil, and Australia. Despite the popularity of sweet oranges, the sour and bitter varieties of oranges are still grown and used in some regions of the world. These varieties are often used in traditional medicines, as well as in cooking and baking. In some regions, Sour oranges are even used to make marmalade, which is a type of sweet spread that is popular in many countries. In conclusion, the journey of the orange from a small, sour fruit to the sweet and juicy fruit that we know today is a testament to the power of human ingenuity and the desire to create new and improved foods. From its origins in Southeast Asia to its widespread cultivation around the world, the orange is a true example of the way that human culture and agriculture can intersect and evolve over time. Peanuts are a staple in many diets and are often referred to as nuts. However, peanuts are not actually nuts in a botanical sense. Instead, peanuts are legumes which are a type of plant that includes beans, lentils, and peas. Peanuts are native to South America, where they have been cultivated for thousands of years. The peanuts that we eat today are a result of hybridization and selective breeding, which has created a larger and sweeter peanut. Over time, peanuts spread to other parts of the world and became a staple food in many cultures. One of the most interesting things about peanuts is their unique growing process. Unlike other plants, which produce their seeds above ground, peanuts grow their seeds underground. This is because the flowers of the peanut plant produce seeds that mature underground. This characteristic makes peanuts distinct from other legumes and nuts. Peanuts are rich in healthy fats, protein, fiber, and various vitamins and minerals. They are also relatively low in calories, making them an excellent choice for those who are trying to maintain a healthy weight. Furthermore, peanuts contain resveratrol, a powerful antioxidant that is known to have anti-inflammatory properties. In addition to being a healthy snack food, peanuts are also used in a variety of other ways. They are often roasted and salted for snacking, used in cooking and baking, and also used to make peanut butter, which is a popular spread that is used in many recipes. Peanut oil is also a popular ingredient in cooking and is often used as a healthier alternative to other oils. Despite their popularity and many health benefits, peanuts can also cause allergies in some people. Peanut allergies are one of the most common food allergies, and they can cause serious reactions in some individuals. For this reason, it is important for those who are allergic to peanuts to avoid consuming them. 
In conclusion, peanuts are not actually nuts, but are instead legumes. Despite this, they are a staple in many diets and are enjoyed for their unique flavor and numerous health benefits. From South America to the rest of the world, peanuts are a true example of the way that food can evolve and change over time. Armadillos are known for their distinctive shells, which have become a symbol of their hardiness and resilience. But what many people don't realize is that these shells are not only tough, they are also bulletproof to a certain extent. Armadillo shells are made of a combination of keratin and bony plates, which are stacked together to create a tough exterior. The bony plates in the shell provide the armadillo with extra protection against predators, and they also help the armadillo to stay cool in hot weather by reflecting sunlight. The bulletproof qualities of the armadillo shell have been tested on multiple occasions. In one experiment, a bullet was fired at an armadillo shell from a close range, and the bullet failed to penetrate the shell. This experiment demonstrated that the armadillo shell is indeed tough and that it can provide protection against certain types of weapons. It's worth noting, however, that while the armadillo shell is tough, it's not impenetrable. The shell can still be penetrated by a bullet if it is fired from a close enough range or if the bullet is fired with enough force. Additionally, the armadillo shell is not designed to protect against all types of weapons, so it's not bulletproof in the traditional sense. Despite its limitations, the armadillo shell is still an impressive feat of nature. It is a clear example of the ways that animals have adapted to their environments in order to survive. The armadillo's ability to protect itself from predators is just one of the many ways that this fascinating creature has evolved over time. Armadillos are also a source of fascination for scientists and researchers who are interested in learning more about their unique biology and adaptations. By studying the armadillo, scientists can gain insight into the ways that animals have adapted to their environments over time, and they can also learn more about the fascinating biology of these creatures. In conclusion, armadillo shells are indeed bulletproof to a certain extent, but they are not impenetrable. Despite their limitations, armadillos are still fascinating creatures, and their shells are a clear example of the ways that animals have adapted to their environments in order to survive. Firefighters are often called upon to put out fires in difficult and challenging circumstances, and one of the key tools in their arsenal is water. But simply using water to extinguish a fire is not always enough. In some cases, firefighters need to use a special type of water that is wetter and more effective than regular water. This special type of water is known as a wetting agent. Wetting agents are chemical substances that are added to water in order to increase its ability to penetrate and extinguish fires. These agents work by reducing the surface tension of the water, which makes it easier for the water to penetrate into materials such as wood, paper, and cloth. This is particularly important in the case of fires, where the fire is often fueled by these types of materials. There are several different types of wetting agents that firefighters can use, each with its own unique properties and characteristics. Some of the most common wetting agents include surfactants, which are substances that reduce the surface tension of water, and hydrophilic agents, which are substances that increase the ability of water to mix with other substances. One of the key benefits of using wetting agents is that they allow firefighters to use less water when putting out fires. This is important because it helps to conserve water resources and also reduces the amount of water damage that is caused to buildings and other structures. Additionally, wetting agents can also help to reduce the amount of runoff from firefighting operations, which helps to protect the environment. Another benefit of using wetting agents is that they can help to improve the safety of firefighters. By reducing the surface tension of the water, Wetting agents can make it easier for firefighters to move around and work in hazardous environments, such as in burning buildings. 
This can be especially important in situations where visibility is limited and the environment is highly dangerous. In conclusion, wetting agents are a vital tool for firefighters, helping them to put out fires more effectively and efficiently. These agents work by reducing the surface tension of water, making it easier for the water to penetrate into materials such as wood, paper, and cloth. Wetting agents also help to conserve water resources and reduce the amount of water damage caused by firefighting operations. The octopus, a fascinating and highly intelligent sea creature, is capable of many surprising and remarkable feats. One of the most impressive is the number of eggs that some species are able to lay at one time. In particular, the female giant Pacific octopus is capable of producing a staggering 56,000 eggs in a single breeding season. The life cycle of the octopus begins with the laying of eggs by the female. After mating with a male, the female will use her arms to create a den, where she will then lay her eggs. This can be done in large numbers, with females capable of producing up to 56,000 eggs in a single breeding season. These eggs are then fertilized by the male and left to hatch, with the young octopuses emerging as miniature versions of their parents. The large number of eggs produced by the female giant Pacific octopus is thought to be a survival mechanism allowing the species to increase its chances of survival despite the many challenges that it faces in the wild. For example, many of the eggs may not hatch, or the young octopuses may fall prey to predators. However, the sheer number of eggs laid ensures that there will always be some that survive, ensuring the continuation of the species. Once the eggs have hatched, the young octopuses will begin to grow and mature, developing the many remarkable abilities that make the octopus such an intriguing and captivating creature. For example, some species are capable of rapidly changing color, shape, and texture to blend in with their surroundings and avoid predators. Others are capable of squirting ink to obscure the predator's vision and allow them to escape. And still others have the ability to use their arms to manipulate objects, opening jars and even playing with toys. The octopus is a highly adaptable creature that can be found in a wide range of environments, from the deep ocean to shallow, warm waters. And, despite their many unique and remarkable abilities, they are also highly vulnerable, with many species facing numerous threats from overfishing, pollution, and climate change. However, with their ability to lay 56,000 eggs at a time, the future of the octopus is likely to be secure for generations to come. Cats, with their grace and agility, have long been a subject of fascination for humans. These fascinating creatures have a unique physical characteristic that sets them apart from many other animals, they have fewer toes on their back paws. This phenomenon is known as polydactylism and it is a genetic variation that is found in some cats. The average cat has 18 toes, with 5 toes on each front paw and 4 toes on each hind paw. However, cats with polydactylism have more toes, with some cats having as many as seven toes on a single paw. This extra digit can range from a small nub to a fully formed extra toe. The most common type of polydactylism in cats is when they have an extra toe on their front paws, although it is possible for them to have extra toes on their hind paws as well. The extra toes in cats with polydactylism are believed to be a result of a dominant gene that is passed down from generation to generation. This gene causes the bones in the paws to develop differently and results in the formation of extra toes. In some cases, the extra toe is functional and can be used like any other toe. However, in other cases, the extra toe may not be fully functional and may not provide any additional benefits to the cat. 
There is some evidence to suggest that polydactylism may have provided an evolutionary advantage to cats in the past. For example, it is believed that the extra toes may have helped cats climb trees and catch prey more easily. Additionally, it is thought that the extra toes may have provided extra stability and balance, making it easier for cats to walk on narrow ledges and climb up steep inclines. While polydactylism is a genetic variation that is found in some cats, it is not common in the general cat population. In fact, it is estimated that only around 5 to 10 percent of cats have polydactylism. Despite this, polydactyl cats have become a popular subject of fascination and are often sought after by cat enthusiasts and collectors. In conclusion, Cats with polydactylism are a unique and fascinating aspect of feline biology. With their extra toes, these cats have a distinctive and endearing physical characteristic that sets them apart from the average cat. Whether the extra toes provide an evolutionary advantage or are simply a result of a genetic variation, polydactyl cats remain a popular subject of fascination for cat lovers everywhere. The blue whale, the largest mammal in the world, has a remarkable feeding habit. Unlike most mammals that hunt for small prey, blue whales consume large quantities of food in a single mouthful. A single mouthful of food for a blue whale can contain up to half a million calories, providing a substantial boost to its energy levels. Blue whales feed on a specific type of krill, a tiny shrimp-like crustacean that is found in the polar regions of the world. These krill are packed with nutrients and are essential to the survival of the blue whale. During the feeding season, blue whales are known to consume up to 4 tons of krill each day, making them one of the largest consumers of food in the animal kingdom. The feeding process of blue whales is an incredible sight to behold. Blue whales first use their large mouths to scoop up a large quantity of krill and water. The whale then closes its mouth and pushes the water out through its baleen plates, which are similar to a comb and are located in the upper jaw. The baleen plates filter the water out, leaving the krill trapped in the whale's mouth. The whale then swallows the krill, which provides a massive burst of energy for the whale to survive on. One of the most fascinating aspects of blue whale feeding is their ability to consume such a large amount of food in a single mouthful. This is due to their enormous size, as blue whales can grow up to 100 feet long and weigh as much as 200 tons. Their mouth is so large that it can accommodate an entire school bus, making it one of the largest mouths in the animal kingdom. Despite the large amount of food that blue whales consume, they do not have a large number of predators in the wild. The only known predator of the blue whale is the human, who hunted the species to near extinction in the 20th century. Today, blue whales are considered a threatened species, and their numbers are slowly increasing thanks to conservation efforts. In conclusion, the blue whale's ability to consume half a million calories in a single mouthful is a remarkable feat that highlights the incredible adaptations of this species. As the largest mammal in the world, the blue whale plays a crucial role in maintaining the balance of the ocean's ecosystem and is a fascinating subject for scientists and animal lovers alike. Disney animation has been captivating audiences for decades. From its early beginnings in the 1930s to the present day, Disney has established itself as one of the most iconic animation studios in the world. One of the reasons that Disney animations are so recognizable is because of the consistent design elements that are present in every character. One of these design elements is gloves. Almost all Disney characters are depicted wearing gloves, but the reason for this may surprise you. It has nothing to do with fashion or style, but instead, it has everything to do with animation. 
When it comes to animation, the simpler the design, the easier it is to animate. Gloves are a simple way to add dimension to a character's hands without having to animate each finger individually. By wearing gloves, animators can simplify the animation process, making it easier and faster to create an entire scene. This, in turn, allows for more time to be spent on other aspects of the animation, such as background details and character expressions. Another reason why gloves are so commonly used in Disney animation is because they add a level of uniformity to the characters. This uniformity makes it easier for audiences to identify each character and follow their actions in a scene. The gloves also help to distinguish the characters from each other, even if they are similar in other ways. This is especially important when there are multiple characters in a scene, as it makes it easier for audiences to follow the action. The use of gloves in Disney animation has become so ubiquitous that it is now part of the studio's brand. Whether it's Mickey Mouse, Goofy, or any other character, gloves are an essential part of their design. This is why, even in more recent Disney films, characters are still depicted wearing gloves. In conclusion, the use of gloves in Disney animation is not just a design element, but a practical solution to make the animation process easier and more efficient. The gloves have become an iconic part of the Disney brand, and audiences have come to expect to see gloves on their favorite characters. By simplifying the animation process and creating a uniform look for the characters, gloves play a crucial role in the success of Disney animation. The current design of the American flag is an iconic symbol of patriotism and national pride. What many may not know is that this recognizable design was created by a high school student. In the late 1940s, a 17-year-old student by the name of Robert G. Heft was assigned a project to create a new design for the American flag. This assignment came as a result of Alaska and Hawaii becoming the newest states in the United States, and the need for a new flag that would represent the growing nation. Robert Heft was a student at Lancaster High School in Ohio and was not particularly interested in the project, but saw it as a way to earn a good grade. He chose to design a flag that would have 50 stars, with 5 rows of 6 stars and 4 rows of 5 stars, and 13 stripes representing the original 13 colonies. Heft's design was influenced by the flag that had been used during the Civil War, but with an updated number of stars to reflect the growing number of states. After completing his design, Heft submitted it to his teacher, who graded it as a B. The teacher was not impressed with the design, but Heft was not deterred. He sent his design to the office of the Speaker of the House, who was in charge of overseeing the design and production of the American flag. The design was officially adopted by Congress on July 4, 1960, and has since become the current American flag we recognize today. Since the adoption of his design, Robert Heff has become a symbol of American ingenuity and determination. He used his imagination and creativity to create a new and iconic design for the American flag, which has become a symbol of hope, freedom, and patriotism for millions of people around the world. As a testament to his impact on American history, Robert Heft's flag design is displayed in the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. Heft's story is a powerful reminder that even the smallest ideas can have a lasting impact on the world, and that anyone, regardless of age or background, can contribute to making history. The advancement of technology has brought about numerous innovative solutions for various industries, and space exploration is no exception. One such innovation is the use of 3D printing and manufacturing tools and equipment for astronauts. This development has had a profound impact on the way NASA operates and has changed the course of space exploration. 
Before 3D printing, astronauts had to rely on ground support to provide them with any tools or equipment they needed while on their missions. This often led to delays and added a significant amount of time and resources to the overall mission. However, with the advent of 3D printing, NASA has found a new way to send tools to astronauts in space. The process works by using a digital design of the tool and printing it in space using a 3D printer. This has allowed NASA to save time and resources and has made it possible for astronauts to receive the tools they need in a matter of hours, rather than the days or weeks it would take for them to be sent from Earth. Another benefit of 3D printing in space is that it provides a solution for the issue of limited resources in space. This has been a problem for many years, as astronauts are limited to the amount of equipment and supplies they can bring with them on their missions. With 3D printing, astronauts can print the tools they need on demand, which reduces the need for large amounts of supplies to be brought with them and frees up space for other essential items. The benefits of 3D printing in space are not limited to just the astronauts and NASA. The technology has also had a significant impact on the manufacturing industry, as it has allowed companies to create products in a much more efficient manner. This has resulted in a significant reduction in production time and has made it possible to create products with greater precision. In conclusion, the use of 3D printing in space has had a profound impact on the way NASA operates, and has changed the course of space exploration. It has allowed astronauts to receive the tools they need in a matter of hours and has reduced the need for large amounts of supplies to be brought with them. The technology has also had a significant impact on the manufacturing industry and has allowed for a more efficient production process. The Sahara Desert is one of the most iconic and well-known deserts in the world. It is widely considered as a vast and inhospitable wasteland of sand and heat, but the reality is that only a quarter of the Sahara Desert is actually comprised of sand dunes. The majority of the Sahara is actually made up of rocky plateaus, gravel plains, and salt pans, with sand dunes only making up a relatively small portion of the overall landscape. The sand dunes that are present in the Sahara are some of the largest and tallest in the world, and are typically found in the northern and central regions of the desert. These dunes can reach heights of up to 300 meters, and can stretch for hundreds of kilometers in some cases. The sand in the dunes is made up of particles of rock and mineral that have been eroded over time, and carried by the wind to their current location. While the sand dunes in the Sahara may look like a barren and inhospitable environment, they are home to a number of unique and adapted species of plants and animals. For example, the sand gazelle is a small, desert-dwelling mammal that is able to thrive in the harsh conditions of the Sahara by feeding on vegetation that grows in the spaces between the dunes. Other species, such as the sand cat, have evolved physical adaptations such as large ears and paws that allow them to regulate their body temperature and move easily across the shifting sands. Despite its reputation as a harsh and inhospitable environment, the Sahara Desert is actually an important and unique ecosystem that supports a rich diversity of life. While the majority of the desert is made up of rocky plateaus, gravel plains, and salt pans, the sand dunes that are present in the Sahara are some of the largest and tallest in the world, and are home to a number of unique and adapted species of plants and animals. In conclusion, the Sahara Desert is not the vast, sandy wasteland that many people imagine. In fact, only a quarter of the Sahara is comprised of sand dunes, with the majority of the landscape being made up of rocky plateaus, gravel plains, and salt pans. Despite its reputation as a harsh and inhospitable environment, the Sahara is actually an important and unique ecosystem that supports a rich diversity of life. Volcanoes are geological wonders that are capable of shaping the landscape, influencing the atmosphere, and providing an avenue for scientific discovery. The presence of active volcanoes on the Moon, especially during the time when dinosaurs roamed the Earth, is a topic of much debate and speculation among scientists and researchers. 
While the exact nature of lunar volcanic activity remains uncertain, it is clear that this phenomenon had a significant impact on the Moon's surface and its environment. The Moon, like Earth, is believed to have undergone several stages of volcanic activity throughout its history. During the Hadean period, the Moon is thought to have been bombarded by massive impacts that caused its surface to melt, creating a magma ocean. Over time, this magma solidified, forming the Moon's crust and triggering volcanic eruptions that produced massive shield volcanoes and fissure eruptions. However, the question remains as to whether or not the Moon had active volcanoes during the time of the dinosaurs. The absence of a dense atmosphere and magnetic field on the Moon means that it has been subjected to a much greater amount of meteorite impacts over time than the Earth. This bombardment has erased much of the evidence of volcanic activity on the Moon's surface, making it difficult to determine with certainty whether or not it was active during the dinosaur era. One line of evidence that suggests that the Moon may have had active volcanoes during the time of the dinosaurs comes from the study of lunar samples collected by the Apollo missions. These samples contain high levels of isotopes that are indicative of volcanic activity, suggesting that the Moon was indeed volcanically active during the late heavy bombardment period. Additionally, the presence of massive lunar rift valleys, which are thought to be the result of extensive volcanic activity, further supports the idea that the Moon was volcanically active during this time. In conclusion, while the exact nature of lunar volcanic activity during the time of the dinosaurs remains uncertain, it is clear that this phenomenon played a significant role in shaping the Moon's surface and environment. Further research and exploration of the Moon's geological history will continue to shed light on this fascinating topic. As we age, our bodies undergo numerous physical changes, some of which are more noticeable than others. One such change that many people may not be aware of is that our noses and ears tend to get bigger as we grow older. This phenomenon is a result of the aging process and can have both cosmetic and practical implications. The human nose and ear are made up of cartilage, which is a type of connective tissue that is not as dense or rigid as bone. Over time, the cartilage in our noses and ears begins to soften and lose its elasticity, which can cause them to grow in size. This process is particularly noticeable in the earlobes, which can become elongated and droop as a result of the aging process. In addition to the physical changes to the nose and ear, the skin surrounding these structures also begins to thin and sag, further exacerbating the appearance of their growth. This can lead to an imbalance in the facial features, resulting in a less youthful and more aged appearance. While the changes to the nose and ear may be cosmetic in nature, they can also have practical implications. For example, larger ears can be more susceptible to infections and irritations, as they may be more likely to come into contact with foreign objects. Additionally, Changes to the nose can impact the sense of smell and affect the ability to taste. Despite these changes, there are ways to mitigate the effects of aging on the nose in a year. One approach is to use topical creams and lotions that contain retinoids, which can help to improve the elasticity and firmness of the skin. In addition, wearing an ear band when participating in activities that put the ears at risk, such as swimming or sleeping, can help to prevent infection and irritation. In conclusion, as we age, our noses and ears tend to grow in size due to changes in the cartilage and skin. While these changes may be cosmetic in nature, they can also have practical implications and may require corrective action. By using topical creams, wearing protective gear, and considering cosmetic surgery in severe cases, Individuals can help to mitigate the effects of aging on their noses and ears.
The United States government has recently undertaken a significant project to preserve a vast amount of digital information. This project involves saving every public tweet that was posted on the popular social media platform Twitter from 2006 to 2017. This monumental effort was initiated due to the increasing importance of digital media in shaping public opinion, as well as the recognition of the historical significance of these data. Twitter has become one of the most influential platforms in the world, with millions of users sharing their thoughts, opinions, and experiences on a daily basis. The sheer volume of information that is shared on the platform has made it a valuable source of data for researchers, journalists, and academics. The decision to save every public tweet from 2006 to 2017 was made to ensure that this data is preserved and accessible for future generations. The government's effort to save these tweets was not without its challenges. The vast amount of data involved in this project posed a significant technical challenge, as it required a robust system that could store and manage this data effectively. The government worked with various stakeholders, including technology companies, to develop a solution that would meet their needs. The result of this project is a massive archive of tweets that provides a wealth of information about the events, opinions, and experiences of people from around the world. This data can be used to study a wide range of topics, from political movements to cultural trends. Researchers can use this data to analyze public opinion on specific issues, track the spread of misinformation, and even study the impact of social media on society. In addition to its practical applications, the archive of tweets is also of great historical significance. It provides a unique glimpse into the experiences of people from around the world during a critical period in history. This data can be used to study the evolution of social media and its impact on society, as well as provide insights into how people responded to major events such as natural disasters, political elections, and acts of terrorism. The U.S. government's effort to save every public tweet from 2006 to 2017 is a significant milestone in the preservation of digital information. It represents a recognition of the importance of this data and a commitment to ensuring that it is accessible for future generations. The Central Intelligence Agency CIA, is one of the most secretive organizations in the world, known for its intelligence gathering and covert operations. Despite its reputation for being a highly secure and classified institution, the CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, is home to a surprising feature, a Starbucks. The Starbucks in the CIA headquarters is like any other Starbucks you might find in a shopping mall or on a street corner, with one key exception, the baristas don't write names on the cups. This is a security measure to protect the identities of CIA employees who frequent the coffee shop. The Starbucks at the CIA headquarters is not open to the general public and can only be accessed by employees of the agency. Despite the limited clientele, it still serves a variety of coffee drinks, pastries, and snacks. It also features the iconic green and white Starbucks logo making it a familiar and welcoming spot for employees who need a break from their demanding work. The Starbucks in the CIA headquarters is a testament to the importance of small comforts and routine in the lives of those who work in high-stress environments. For many employees, grabbing a cup of coffee from the local Starbucks is a daily ritual that provides a moment of respite from the high stakes and intense nature of their work. While the lack of names on the cups may seem like a minor detail, it speaks to the level of security and secrecy that is necessary in the CIA. By keeping the names of employees off their cups, the agency can ensure that sensitive information is not disclosed or compromised. The presence of a Starbucks in the CIA headquarters also highlights the changing nature of the modern workplace. Gone are the days of bland utilitarian break rooms with vending machines and instant coffee. Today, 
employers are investing in the well-being of their employees by providing them with amenities like coffee shops, gyms, and other comfort-oriented spaces. In conclusion, the Starbucks and the CIA headquarters is a unique and unexpected feature of one of the most secretive organizations in the world. While it may seem incongruous for a highly secure and classified institution to have a coffee shop, it is a testament to the importance of small comforts and routine in the lives of those who work in high-stress environments. Tomatoes are widely considered as a staple in many kitchens across the world today. However, this was not always the case. When the tomato was first introduced to Europe in the 16th century, it was met with skepticism, fear, and reluctance. The Europeans were scared of eating tomatoes, and this was due to a number of reasons. First and foremost, the appearance of the tomato was unlike any other fruit or vegetable that the Europeans were familiar with. The tomato was a vibrant red color, and it was an unusual shape. This unfamiliarity made the Europeans wary of the tomato, and many believed that it was poisonous. This belief was fueled by the fact that many plants in the Solanaceae family, which included the tomato, were poisonous. Another reason that the Europeans were scared of eating tomatoes was the association with the exotic and dangerous New World. The tomato was brought to Europe from the Americas, and at the time, the New World was considered to be a place of strange and dangerous creatures. The Europeans were suspicious of anything that came from this new and unknown land, and the tomato was no exception. The fear of the tomato was compounded by the fact that it was often grown in close proximity to poisonous plants. The tomato plant was often grown in the same gardens as plants like belladonna, also known as deadly nightshade, which was highly poisonous. This close association only added to the belief that the tomato was also poisonous. Despite the fears and reservations of the Europeans, the tomato eventually made its way into their diets. This was largely due to the influence of the wealthy and elite, who saw the tomato as a symbol of wealth and status. The wealthy would have the tomato served in their homes, and this helped to dispel the rumors of its poisonous nature. The popularity of Italian cuisine also played a role in the acceptance of the tomato. Tomatoes were used extensively in Italian cuisine, and as the popularity of Italian food spread, so too did the acceptance of the tomato. In conclusion, the fear of eating tomatoes by the Europeans was largely due to their unfamiliarity with the fruit, its association with the exotic and dangerous New World, and the belief that it was poisonous. Despite these fears, the tomato eventually made its way into the diets of the Europeans and is now a widely accepted and loved food. Dreaming is a complex and fascinating phenomenon that has been studied by scientists and psychologists for many years. While it is widely believed that humans dream, it is now known that humans are not the only animals that dream. In fact, recent studies have shown that a wide variety of animals, from mammals to birds, also experience some form of dreaming. Dreaming in animals occurs during the rapid eye movement REM, stage of sleep, which is the same stage in which humans dream. During this stage, the brain is highly active, and animals experience a series of vivid and often bizarre images, sounds, and sensations. Scientists believe that this stage of sleep is crucial for animals because it allows them to process information, consolidate memories, and resolve conflicts or stressors that they may have experienced during the day. In mammals, dreaming has been observed in species such as dogs, cats, and even rodents. For example, when dogs sleep, their legs often move as if they are chasing after something, and their barking can sometimes be heard in their sleep. These movements and vocalizations are believed to be the result of the dogs dreaming about hunting or playing. Similarly, cats have been observed twitching their paws, tails, and whiskers while they sleep, 
which is believed to be the result of their dreaming about hunting or grooming. Birds also dream, and their dreams are often quite complex. For example, studies have shown that birds have different types of REM sleep, and that during this stage, they experience vivid and sometimes intricate dreams. For instance, when birds dream, they may experience flights or other aerial movements, and they may even dream about singing or mating behaviors. Some species of birds, such as the zebra finch, have even been observed dreaming about their specific songs. It is important to note that while the phenomenon of dreaming in animals is similar to that in humans, the content and meaning of these dreams may be vastly different. Despite this difference, the discovery of dreaming in animals has provided valuable insights into the nature of sleep and the function of the brain, and has helped to deepen our understanding of the relationship between sleep, dreaming, and consciousness in both humans and animals. The microwave appliance is a common household item that is used by millions of people around the world every day. Despite its widespread use and importance in the modern kitchen, the inventor of this innovative device received very little recognition or compensation for his groundbreaking discovery. The microwave appliance was invented by Percy Spencer, a self-taught engineer who was working for the Raytheon Corporation during World War II. Spencer was working on a radar system when he noticed that a candy bar in his pocket had melted. This unexpected event led him to investigate the effect of microwaves on food, and he soon discovered that they could be used to cook food quickly and efficiently. In 1945, Spencer filed a patent for the first microwave oven which he called the Radar Inch. Despite its innovative design and potential for revolutionizing the food industry, Spencer received only $2 for his invention, which was later sold to the Tappan Stove Company for a small sum. In the years that followed, the microwave oven became one of the most popular and widely used appliances in the world, but Spencer himself received little recognition or compensation for his groundbreaking discovery. It is important to note that Spencer's lack of compensation was not due to a lack of effort on his part. He was an astute and persistent inventor who filed numerous patents and worked tirelessly to promote his invention. However, he was operating in an era when the value of intellectual property was not widely understood, and many of the benefits of his invention were reaped by others. The story of Percy Spencer and his invention of the microwave oven serves as a reminder of the importance of valuing and protecting intellectual property. Spencer was a visionary and a true innovator who transformed the food industry with his groundbreaking discovery. Despite this, he received only a fraction of the value that his invention generated for others. This highlights the need for a more equitable and just system that recognizes and compensates inventors for their contributions to society. Today, many organizations and governments around the world are working to support and protect inventors and their innovations, and to ensure that the benefits of technological progress are shared more widely and equitably. In this way, the legacy of Percy Spencer and his invention of the microwave oven will continue to inspire and benefit future generations. Medical errors have been identified as a leading cause of death and injury in the healthcare industry. Despite advances in medical technology and the tireless efforts of healthcare professionals, medical errors continue to occur at alarmingly high rates, causing significant harm and loss of life. According to recent studies, medical errors are estimated to cause between 210,000 and 440,000 deaths each year in the United States alone, making them the third leading cause of death surpassed only by heart disease and cancer. These errors can take many forms, including misdiagnosis, medication errors, surgical errors, and other types of medical mistakes. The causes of medical errors are complex and multifaceted, 
and include a range of factors such as poor communication among healthcare providers, lack of standardization in medical practices and procedures, and inadequate training and education. In many cases, these errors are the result of systemic problems in the healthcare system, including insufficient staffing, lack of resources, and poor coordination among healthcare providers. In addition to causing significant harm to patients, medical errors also have a profound economic impact, resulting in billions of dollars in healthcare costs and lost productivity each year. The human toll of medical errors is incalculable, causing immense suffering, distress, and loss of life to patients and their families. Despite the efforts to reduce the occurrence of medical errors, much work remains to be done. To ensure that patients receive safe and effective care, it is essential that healthcare providers, policymakers, and the public work together to create a culture of safety and quality within the healthcare industry. This requires a sustained and concerted effort to identify and address the root causes of medical errors, and to implement effective strategies and solutions to prevent them from occurring. By working together and taking a comprehensive and multifaceted approach to medical errors, we can help to ensure that the healthcare industry is able to deliver the safe, effective, and high-quality care that patients need and deserve. Despite the devastating consequences of medical errors, there is a growing recognition of the need for increased focus and attention on patient safety and quality in the healthcare industry. This includes a range of efforts to prevent and reduce the occurrence of medical errors, such as improved training and education for healthcare providers, better coordination and communication among healthcare teams, and the development of new technologies and tools to support patient safety. The ancient Egyptians were known for their innovative and often unusual medical practices, including the use of dead mice to ease toothaches. This practice, which was documented in ancient medical texts, involved placing a dead mouse directly on the affected tooth or gum in order to relieve pain and inflammation. While the exact reason for this practice is not known, it is believed that the Egyptians believed that the mouse, as a symbol of the god Thoth, had healing properties and could transfer these properties to the patient. Additionally, the mouse may have been used as a natural analgesic, as the Egyptians were aware of the pain-relieving properties of certain plants and animals, including opium and mandrake root. Despite its unusual nature, the use of dead mice to treat toothaches was widely accepted in ancient Egyptian society and was used by both lay people and medical practitioners. The practice was also used in other ancient cultures, including the Greeks and Romans, who believed that mice had mystical powers and could be used to treat a variety of ailments. The use of dead mice as a medical treatment may seem strange and unscientific by modern standards, but it is important to understand that the ancient Egyptians lived in a time when medical knowledge and understanding was limited. The use of dead mice to treat toothaches was one of many medical practices that the Egyptians used to try and alleviate pain and suffering, and their efforts to find new and innovative ways to improve health and well-being are a testament to their ingenuity and resourcefulness. It is important to note that while the use of dead mice to treat toothaches may seem strange and unscientific, the ancient Egyptians made significant contributions to the field of medicine and their practices helped lay the foundation for future advancements. They developed a system of medicine that was based on a holistic approach and incorporated the use of herbs, plants, and other natural remedies to treat illness. The ancient Egyptians also made significant contributions to anatomy and surgery, and they were among the first to perform mummification, which gave them a unique understanding of the human body. While their use of dead mice may seem strange, it is a testament to their ingenuity and resourcefulness and a reminder of the important role that medicine played in ancient Egyptian society. Onions have been a staple food for thousands of years and have been used for both culinary and medicinal purposes. 
Their versatility and versatility have made them a staple in kitchens all over the world. But, did you know that onions were also used in ancient times for more than just cooking? In fact, onions were found in the eyes of an Egyptian mummy, suggesting that they played a significant role in ancient Egyptian culture and beliefs. The discovery of onions in the eyes of an Egyptian mummy dates back to the late 19th century. The mummy was excavated in the necropolis of Deir el Bari and was identified as the remains of a man named Nebamun. Nebamun was a wealthy Egyptian who lived during the 18th dynasty, around 1500 BC. Upon examination, it was discovered that onions had been placed in the eye sockets of the mummy. This discovery sparked widespread interest in the significance of onions in ancient Egyptian culture and beliefs. The ancient Egyptians believed that the afterlife was just as important as life on earth, and so they took great care in preparing the dead for their journey to the afterlife. One of the ways they did this was by placing objects in the eyes of the mummy. The objects used varied, but typically included amulets, coins, or vegetables. In the case of Nebamun, the use of onions in the eyes of the mummy was likely not accidental. Onions were widely used in ancient Egyptian cuisine and were also believed to have medicinal properties. They were thought to have healing properties for the eyes and were used to treat a variety of eye conditions. This, combined with the fact that onions were also a symbol of eternal life, makes it likely that they were placed in the eyes of the mummy as a symbol of his journey to the afterlife. In conclusion, the discovery of onions in the eyes of an Egyptian mummy highlights the important role that this versatile vegetable played in ancient Egyptian culture and beliefs. It shows how the use of onions extended beyond just cooking and into the realm of religious and cultural beliefs, where they were used as symbols of eternal life and as a means of preparing the dead for their journey to the afterlife. Japan has always been known for its unique and innovative confectionery creations, and the latest addition to its list of interesting sweets is the sushi-inspired Kit Kats. The Kit Kat brand, which was originally created in the United Kingdom, has become a global phenomenon, with different countries introducing their own unique flavors and twists to the classic chocolate wafer bar. The sushi-inspired Kit Kats were first introduced in Japan in 2016 and have since become a popular item among tourists visiting the country. These Kit Kats are made to look like sushi rolls, with each piece being wrapped in edible rice paper, similar to the traditional Japanese dish. The flavors offered include salmon, tuna, and egg, each of which is designed to replicate the taste of their respective sushi counterparts. The flavors are achieved through the use of natural ingredients, such as real salmon and tuna, combined with other ingredients such as soy sauce and vinegar. The sushi-inspired Kit Kats are also gluten-free, making them suitable for those with gluten intolerances. The popularity of these unique Kit Kats has led to a rise in demand for other sushi-inspired confectionery items, with many companies releasing similar products in an attempt to capitalize on the trend. However, the original sushi-inspired Kit Kats are still considered to be the best by many, with fans of the product praising its accurate replication of the flavors found in sushi rolls. In addition to their unique flavor, the sushi-inspired Kit Kats have also become popular due to their interesting appearance. The rice paper wrapping and the edible nori seaweed used to hold the Kit Kat pieces together add to the overall aesthetic appeal of the product. The unique appearance and flavors of the sushi-inspired Kit Kats have also made them a popular gift item, with many people buying them as souvenirs to bring back to their friends and family. In fact, the demand for these Kit Kats has been so high that there have been reports of tourists waiting in long lines just to purchase a pack. The high demand for these Kit Kats has also led to a thriving black market, with counterfeit products being sold at inflated prices to unsuspecting tourists. Overall, 
The sushi-inspired cake cats have become a true symbol of Japan's innovative confectionery creations and have helped to further cement the country's reputation as a leader in the confectionery industry. Baseball is a sport that has a rich history, and this is also reflected in the evolution of the equipment and tools used by its officials. One such example is the evolution of the chair used by baseball umpires. In the early days of the sport, umpires used to sit in rocking chairs while making their calls on the field. The rocking chairs were introduced in the late 1800s and were seen as a practical solution for umpires, who often had to stand for hours at a time during games. The rocking chairs allowed umpires to take a break from standing, while still maintaining a good view of the field. The chairs were also designed with the intention of being portable and easily moved from one location to another, as baseball games were often played on makeshift fields and didn't have permanent structures. The rocking chairs quickly became a symbol of baseball and were a common sight at games. They were often used by umpires as a form of relaxation between innings, and were even sometimes used as a place to socialize and chat with other umpires. Despite their popularity, the rocking chairs were eventually phased out in the early 20th century as permanent stadiums were built and more modern equipment was introduced. Today, Baseball umpires use collapsible chairs or stools, which are more practical and easier to transport than the old rocking chairs. However, the rocking chairs have not been completely forgotten and can still be found in museums and exhibits dedicated to the history of baseball. They serve as a reminder of the sport's rich history and the evolution of the equipment and tools used by its officials. In conclusion, the rocking chairs used by baseball umpires in the late 1800s were a unique and interesting aspect of the sport's history. They served as a practical solution for umpires and helped to define the sport during a time when baseball was still in its infancy. The chairs also helped to create a more relaxed and casual atmosphere at baseball games, which was a stark contrast to the more formal and strict attitude seen in other sports at the time. The rocking chairs may have been phased out, but they continue to be remembered and celebrated as an important part of baseball's heritage and evolution. While the rocking chairs have since been replaced by more modern equipment, they remain a fascinating and iconic part of baseball history. The world of literature has a rich and diverse history, with countless works of fiction and non-fiction having been written over the centuries. However, one novel in particular stands out for its unique ending. The world's first novel, The Tale of Genji, written by the Japanese noblewoman Murasaki Shikibu in the early 11th century, ends mid-sentence, leaving readers with a sense of unfinished business. The Tale of Genji is considered to be one of the greatest works of Japanese literature and is often referred to as the world's first novel due to its complex and detailed storytelling, character development, and the use of narrative techniques that were not commonly seen in earlier works of literature. The novel is a semi-autobiographical account of the life of a nobleman named Genji and his relationships with various women. Despite its groundbreaking status, the novel's ending has long been a subject of debate and speculation among literary scholars and fans alike. The text abruptly cuts off in the middle of a sentence, leaving readers with an unresolved plotline and a sense of frustration. It is believed that the author, Murasaki Shikibu, may have died before completing the novel or that the original text has been lost over time. The ending of the tale of Genji has also led to a number of theories about the author's intended direction for the story. Some scholars believe that the mid-sentence ending may have been a deliberate choice, meant to encourage readers to imagine their own conclusion to the story. Others have suggested that the author may have been deliberately leaving the story open-ended to allow for multiple interpretations and meanings. Regardless of the reason behind the mid-sentence ending, 
The Tale of Genji remains a masterful work of literature that continues to captivate and inspire readers around the world. Whatever the reason for the unfinished ending, The Tale of Genji remains an important and influential work of literature. It has inspired countless other works of fiction, including novels, plays, and films, and continues to be widely read and studied today. The novel's unique ending has also contributed to its enduring appeal and has helped to spark discussion and debate about the nature of storytelling and the role of the author. In conclusion, The Tale of Genji is a truly remarkable work of literature that has stood the test of time. Its groundbreaking style and storytelling techniques have made it a classic, and its unfinished ending has only added to its mystique and appeal. The world's first novel may have ended mid-sentence, but its impact on the world of literature is far from finished. In today's fast-paced and highly demanding world, it is not uncommon for individuals to become frustrated or upset over seemingly minor issues. However, one recent incident stands out as a prime example of the lengths some individuals will go to in order to have their expectations met. A woman in the United States recently called the police to report that her ice cream did not have enough sprinkles. The incident, which occurred at a local ice cream shop, sparked widespread disbelief and criticism on social media, with many people questioning the woman's judgment and the priorities of law enforcement. The situation highlights the growing trend of people becoming increasingly entitled and demanding, and the willingness of some individuals to involve the police in trivial matters. The police, who are typically tasked with more serious and pressing issues such as crime, terrorism, and public safety, found themselves having to respond to a call about a lack of sprinkles on ice cream. The incident raises important questions about the role of the police in the use of their resources, as well as the larger issue of entitlement and the expectations of customer service. The incident also raises concerns about the proper use of emergency services and the allocation of resources. While the police are equipped to handle a wide range of situations, it is important that they are not bogged down by trivial matters that could be addressed through other means. In this case, it would have been more appropriate for the woman to speak with the management of the ice cream shop or seek a resolution through customer service channels rather than involving the police. In the end, the police were unable to resolve the issue as the woman was reportedly dissatisfied with the store's offer of a free replacement Sunday, The incident serves as a reminder of the importance of maintaining a sense of perspective and prioritizing the use of valuable resources, such as the police, for more serious and pressing matters. In conclusion, the incident of the woman calling the police over a lack of sprinkles on her ice cream is a prime example of the growing trend of entitlement and the willingness of some individuals to involve the police in trivial matters. It highlights the importance of maintaining a sense of perspective and prioritizing the use of valuable resources, such as the police, for more serious and pressing issues. The British Empire was one of the most expansive and influential empires in world history, stretching across multiple continents and influencing the development of numerous countries and cultures. At its height, the British Empire included vast territories in Africa, Asia, the Americas, and Europe, and its impact was felt across the world. The roots of the British Empire can be traced back to the 16th century, with the colonization of the Americas and the establishment of trading posts in India and other parts of Asia. Throughout the 17th and 18th centuries, the British continued to expand their holdings, building a global empire that was unparalleled in its size and reach. The British Empire played a major role in shaping the modern world. Its influence on trade, 
economics, and politics was felt across the globe, and its impact was particularly significant in the development of its colonies. Through the spread of its language, institutions, and culture, the British Empire helped to create a unified global community that transcended national borders. The British Empire was also marked by numerous conflicts, including wars between Britain and other European powers, as well as rebellions and uprisings within its colonies. Despite these challenges, the British were able to maintain control over their empire for many decades, thanks in part to their strong navy and their ability to adapt to changing conditions. One of the most lasting legacies of the British Empire is its impact on the English language. Today, English is widely spoken around the world, and it is the dominant language in many former colonies, where it serves as a lingua franca for people from diverse cultural backgrounds. Additionally, many of the institutions and practices that were developed within the British Empire continue to shape the world today, from the legal system to the parliamentary system of government. Despite its many achievements, the British Empire was not without its faults. The exploitation and oppression of colonial subjects was a recurring theme throughout the empire's history, and many former colonies continue to struggle with the legacy of British rule. The exploitation of resources, cultural suppression, and social injustice left deep scars on many countries and peoples, and the memories of these injustices continue to shape the relationships between Britain and its former colonies. In conclusion, the British Empire was the largest empire in world history, stretching across multiple continents and influencing the development of numerous countries and cultures. Its impact was felt across the world, and its legacy continues to shape the relationships between Britain and its former colonies. Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb and the phonograph, played a significant role in shaping the world as we know it today. While it may seem far-fetched to associate the man who lit up the world with the enjoyment of cat videos, it is actually quite accurate. Edison's contributions to the field of technology set the stage for the development of modern communication and entertainment. The phonograph, his most famous invention, was the first machine capable of reproducing sound recordings, laying the foundation for the modern music industry. In addition, the invention of the motion picture camera by Edison's assistant, William Kennedy Dixon, marked the beginning of the film industry. Thomas Edison was also a visionary and a pioneer in his field. He held over 1,000 patents and his innovations revolutionized the way people live and work. He saw the potential of technology to improve people's lives and dedicated his life to making it a reality. His legacy lives on in the numerous advancements in technology that we continue to see today, including the widespread use of cat videos. The advancements in technology brought about by Edison allowed for the creation and dissemination of various forms of media, including the Internet. The Internet is a vast network of interconnected computers and servers that provide us with access to information, entertainment, and communication. With the advent of the Internet, people can now share their favorite cat videos with the world in a matter of seconds. The prevalence of cat videos on the Internet can be attributed to the unique and humorous nature of felines. Their antics and expressions are endearing and often bring a smile to our faces. The widespread popularity of cat videos has also led to the creation of various websites, such as YouTube, where people can upload and share their favorite feline clips. The ability to upload and share cat videos is a testament to Edison's impact on the world. Without his inventions and innovations in the field of technology, the internet as we know it today would not exist, and the world would be devoid of the hilarious cat videos that bring us joy. In conclusion, while Thomas Edison's contributions to the world may not have been directly related to the enjoyment of cat videos, they have had a profound impact on the development of modern technology and communication. Without Edison's innovations, the internet and its many forms of media, including cat videos, would not exist.
Bees, known for their ability to produce honey, are also capable of making colored honey. This fascinating phenomenon is the result of the nectar that the bees collect and use to make honey. While all honey starts out as colorless nectar, it can take on different hues depending on the type of flowers the bees gather nectar from. The color of honey can range from nearly colorless to dark brown and everything in between. Light colored honeys, such as acacia and clover, are typically mild in flavor and are used as a sweetener in cooking and baking. Dark colored honeys, such as buckwheat and eucalyptus, have a stronger, more robust flavor and are often used in marinades, sauces, and glazes. The color of honey is also an indicator of its flavor and aroma. For example, orange blossom honey is light in color and has a sweet, floral aroma, while dark buckwheat honey has a strong, bold flavor and a robust aroma. The variety of colors and flavors of honey makes it a versatile ingredient in cooking and baking. The process of making colored honey starts with the nectar that the bees collect from flowers. When the bees collect nectar, they add enzymes to it, which breaks down the complex sugars into simple sugars. They then store the nectar in honeycomb cells, where it begins to evaporate and thicken into honey. As the nectar is transformed into honey, it can take on color and flavor from the flowers the bees collected nectar from. The concentration of the nectar and the type of flower it was collected from can both affect the final color and flavor of the honey. The color of the honey can also change over time, becoming darker as it ages. In addition to its color and flavor, honey also has numerous health benefits. It contains antioxidants, antibacterial properties, and has been shown to boost immune function. These health benefits make honey a valuable addition to a healthy diet. Whether it is used in cooking, baking, or simply enjoyed on its own, the versatility and benefits of honey make it a staple in kitchens all over the world. In conclusion, the ability of bees to make colored honey is a testament to their remarkable abilities. The different hues and flavors of honey are a result of the nectar the bees collect in the process of transforming it into honey. The variety of colors and flavors of honey makes it a versatile ingredient in cooking and baking, adding depth and complexity to a wide range of dishes. The world's oldest toy is, in fact, a stick. While it may seem unremarkable, the stick has been a source of imaginative play and entertainment for thousands of years. Dating back to prehistoric times, sticks have been used by children and adults alike to engage in imaginative play and to pass the time. The simplicity of the stick has made it a timeless toy that has stood the test of time. It requires no batteries, no electricity, and no instructions. All it requires is a little bit of imagination. Children have used sticks to create swords, magic wands, and even animals. Adults have used sticks to create musical instruments and tools for hunting and gathering. The stick's versatility is what has made it a popular toy for generations. It can be used for imaginative play, physical activity, and creative expression. The stick can be carved, painted, and decorated, allowing for endless possibilities for imaginative play. Whether it's being used to play war with friends, to create a puppet show, or to build a fort, the stick has been an integral part of childhood for thousands of years. The stick's popularity can also be attributed to its affordability and accessibility. Unlike many modern toys, the stick does not require a large financial investment. It can be found in most parks and wooded areas, and it's easy to obtain. This accessibility has made it a popular choice for families who cannot afford to buy expensive toys. The stick has also played an important role in cultural and historical events. In many indigenous cultures, sticks were used as tools and weapons. 
They were also used in religious ceremonies and rituals. In many cultures, the stick has also been used as a tool for storytelling and oral tradition. In conclusion, the world's oldest toy, the stick, has a rich history and continues to be a beloved toy for children and adults alike. Its simplicity, versatility, affordability, and accessibility make it a timeless toy that has stood the test of time. Whether it's used for imaginative play, physical activity, or creative expression, the stick continues to be an important part of childhood and cultural heritage. The Pope is one of the most recognized and respected leaders in the world, but despite this, he is not able to be an organ donor. The reasons for this are both practical and religious in nature. First and foremost, the Pope is the head of the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church has strict rules and guidelines regarding the use of the human body after death. The Catholic Church teaches that the body should be treated with respect and dignity, and that it should be treated as a temple of the Holy Spirit. This means that the body should not be used for medical experimentation or organ transplantation. Furthermore, the Pope's role as the leader of the Catholic Church requires him to have a high level of physical and mental health. Organ donation involves a significant surgical procedure, which would pose a risk to the Pope's health and ability to perform his duties. Additionally, the Pope is typically elderly, and his age and medical history may make him an unsuitable candidate for organ transplantation. In addition to religious and practical considerations, there are also security concerns when it comes to the Pope and organ donation. The Pope is a high-profile figure, and his safety is of utmost importance. Organ transplantation involves a significant medical procedure, and there is a risk that the Pope could be targeted during this process. Despite these reasons, the Pope's stance on organ donation is not a blanket ban on the practice. In fact, the Catholic Church encourages organ donation as a way of demonstrating love and care for others. The Church believes that organ donation can be a way of sharing the gift of life and of serving others. However, the Church also recognizes that organ donation is a personal decision and should be made with careful consideration and in accordance with one's own beliefs and values. The Church encourages individuals to prayerfully reflect on the decision to become an organ donor and to discuss the matter with their families. In conclusion, while the Pope cannot be an organ donor due to a combination of religious, practical, and security concerns, he and the Catholic Church support the practice of organ donation as a way of serving others and sharing the gift of life. The Eiffel Tower is a global icon and a symbol of France, but few people know that it can be up to 15 centimeters taller during the summer months. This is due to a unique phenomenon known as thermal expansion, which occurs when a material expands as its temperature increases. The Eiffel Tower is made of iron, which is a metal that is particularly susceptible to thermal expansion. The Eiffel Tower was built between 1887 and 1889 for the 1889 Exposition Universelle, a world's fair held in Paris. Gustave Eiffel, the tower's designer, took thermal expansion into account when designing the tower. He knew that the iron would expand in the heat of the summer, so he designed the tower with movable joints that would allow for this expansion. These joints allow the tower to expand and contract as its temperature changes, which helps to prevent it from cracking or breaking. Thermal expansion is not the only factor that can affect the height of the Eiffel Tower. The tower is also affected by wind, rain, snow, and other environmental factors. For example, the tower can sink into the ground during heavy rain or when the ground is soft. Additionally, the tower can lean slightly in the wind, which can also affect its height. Despite these fluctuations, the Eiffel Tower is incredibly sturdy and has survived for over 130 years. It is considered to be one of the greatest engineering feats of the 19th century, and it remains a popular tourist destination to this day. 
Over 250 million people have visited the tower since it was built, and it is estimated that around 7 million people visit the tower every year. In addition to its cultural and historical significance, the Eiffel Tower is also a testament to the power of human innovation and determination. Despite being built over a century ago, it remains a popular tourist destination and a source of inspiration for people all over the world. Whether you're an engineer, an artist, or just a curious traveler, the Eiffel Tower is a must-see destination that is sure to leave a lasting impression. In conclusion, the Eiffel Tower can be up to 15 centimeters taller during the summer due to thermal expansion. This is a result of the tower's design and the fact that it is made of iron, which is a metal that is particularly susceptible to thermal expansion. Despite this and other environmental factors, the Eiffel Tower remains an engineering marvel and a symbol of France. Guinea pigs or cavies are popular pets all over the world, but in Switzerland, owning just one guinea pig is illegal. This strange law is a result of the country's commitment to animal welfare and its recognition of the social nature of guinea pigs. In Switzerland, it is believed that owning just one guinea pig can lead to boredom and stress, which can negatively impact the animal's health and well-being. Guinea pigs are social animals that thrive in the company of other guinea pigs. They are known to groom each other, cuddle together, and engage in playful behavior. In the wild, guinea pigs live in large communities, and they rely on social interaction to maintain their health and happiness. When kept as pets, guinea pigs need the company of other guinea pigs to feel comfortable and secure. In Switzerland, the law requires that pet owners provide their animals with the appropriate care, including proper housing, food and water. In the case of guinea pigs, this means that they must be kept in pairs or in larger groups. Pet stores in Switzerland typically sell guinea pigs in pairs, and pet owners are required to provide adequate space for their pets to live comfortably. The law regarding guinea pigs in Switzerland is part of a larger movement to improve animal welfare in the country. Switzerland has some of the strictest animal welfare laws in the world, and it is one of the few countries that recognizes the social needs of guinea pigs. This commitment to animal welfare has led to better conditions for guinea pigs and other pets, and it has helped to raise awareness about the importance of providing proper care for animals. Switzerland's commitment to animal welfare is commendable, and it serves as a model for other countries to follow. The law regarding guinea pigs is just one example of the country's efforts to ensure that all animals are treated with dignity and respect. By recognizing the social needs of guinea pigs and requiring pet owners to provide appropriate care, Switzerland is making a positive difference in the lives of these beloved pets. In conclusion, Owning just one guinea pig is illegal in Switzerland due to the country's commitment to animal welfare. Guinea pigs are social animals that thrive in the company of other guinea pigs, and the law requires that they be kept in pairs or in larger groups. This law is part of a larger movement to improve animal welfare in Switzerland, and it has helped to raise awareness about the importance of providing proper care for animals. The unicorn is a mythical creature that has captured the imagination of people all over the world for centuries. But did you know that the unicorn is also the national animal of Scotland? That's right, this magical creature is an important part of Scottish culture and history, and it serves as a symbol of the country's independence and strength. The origins of the unicorn as a symbol of Scotland can be traced back to the 12th century, when it was first mentioned in Scottish folklore. According to legend, the unicorn was a fierce and powerful animal that could only be tamed by a pure and virtuous maiden. This made the unicorn a symbol of purity, grace, and strength, and it quickly became an important part of Scottish culture and mythology. 
Over time, the unicorn became a symbol of Scotland's independence and strength. During the wars of Scottish independence in the 14th century, Scottish armies used the unicorn as a symbol of their defiance against the English. In the centuries that followed, the unicorn became an increasingly important part of Scottish culture, and it was eventually declared the country's national animal. The unicorn has played an important role in Scottish art, literature, and music for centuries, and it remains an important part of the country's cultural heritage to this day. The unicorn can be found on the Scottish coat of arms, on the Royal Standard of Scotland, and on the Scottish flag, which is known as the Saltier. The unicorn is also a popular symbol in Scottish art, literature, and music, and it continues to inspire artists and writers to this day. In addition to its cultural and historical significance, the unicorn is also an important symbol of hope and optimism. The mythical creature represents a world of wonder and magic, and it reminds us of the importance of maintaining our sense of wonder and imagination. For many people, the unicorn is a source of inspiration, and it provides a much-needed escape from the challenges and difficulties of everyday life. In conclusion, the unicorn is the national animal of Scotland and it serves as a symbol of the country's independence, strength, and cultural heritage. This magical creature has captured the imagination of people all over the world for centuries, and it continues to play an important role in Scottish art, literature, and music. Whether you're a lover of mythical creatures, a fan of Scottish culture, or simply someone who is looking for a source of inspiration, the unicorn is an important symbol that is sure to touch your heart.